The date is August 23rd, 1947, the beginning of the Sicily Campaign. With the United States troops having landed in Sicily and finally having troops in Europe, they instantly defend the area with American warships taking out destroyer and transport units near the coast. With the main American battleship, the USS Pearl Harbor, being the main battleship during the Sicily campaign, the USS Pearl Harbor was made to honor people who lost their lives on December 7, 1941. The United States have a hard time taking water of control because Germany was leader of the skies during the time. With jet power as the Flying Wings program and the Messerschmitt ME-163 Comet were very successful unlike our own timeline, giving Germany full air superiority with bombing runs that would hit American ships and the American front lines for weeks on end. The American and German troops were on a stalemate on the European front, while on the African front, the people there were starting to have small revolts in the streets to overthrow the German and American governments. The German colonies were brutally suppressed, while the American colonies were given freedom of speech and equal voting rights, but not their independence. The African theater was a terrible sight to see, as many American and German ground units fought from the rising sun to the setting sun, day by day, night by night. The Americans would start to make a slow push through, but it would not be very successful. While this was happening in Africa, Europe was in mayhem. The bombing of cities, revolts of the German Empire, and many, many brutal suppression under the Nazi rule for non-Aryan people, especially Jews, French, and British. It was a darker time than our own, with mass genocides all over Europe. The United States President, President Harry S. Truman, sent a letter to the German leader Adolf Hitler, asking him for a ceasefire in Europe so they could both meet up to discuss a peaceful end to this war. There was no response back. With the American troops quickly moving into German African territories, wiping out large forces of German tanks and soldiers, they would quickly encircle a lot of these troops and make them under siege for many months. The American paratroopers were the main spearhead of American attacks. It would see thousands of dead, but a lot of land gains during this campaign. The map of the world at the time was very different from our own. With America having African, Middle East, and Asian con colonies under their control to spread democracy all over the world and to easily invade fascist movement territories like their African territories, their Middle Eastern territories, which they do not have just yet, and their Asian territories. Pretty much all you have to know is dark red equals a German puppet, red equals Germany, purple equals a German ally, green equals Italy, and blue equals the United States of America. After the circular movement in Chad, the United States would continue to send more troops through the border as American tankers would have to fight in this area for many months on end. Chad would soon have its encircled troops, well not Chad, well Germany, would have encircled troops taken out over there and a large spearhead would start up here near it, the Italian territories which Italy was on a nice big stalemate with the United States in these areas. With more American troops pushing in, a, a new movement and a new operation would soon start, called Operation Desert Cheetah, which was America sending paratroopers to fully cut off this top part. And when the operation was began, paratroopers would drop through cutting off this little a large area. And American forces would continue to push through around this area wiping out panzer divisions and SS divisions of German troops until the entire area is forced to capitulate. Mr. Truman did not want this to be easy for the Je for the Nazi allies, and so they would start a push into Libya as well to try to get over to the Mediterranean. These areas are very undefended as they are mainly just giant deserts, and so they would easily push through as it would take a while for Italian tanks and military equipment to get down to this area. But soon, America would face f very fierce Italian resistance, and would get an entire army encircled, and would have to start to push back, as the Italian armies were quite strong in this little area, as they needed to protect their Mediterranean trade power. And as this entire area would soon fall to the Italian forces, Italy would stop until they would soon hit a stalemate upon this line. 
In the Mediterranean, American ships who were relatively in the island of Malta have started to act a lot more aggressive. Now, on this channel, um, naval warfare is shown by two ways. The allies, or the good guys, will show in this blue color, which you can see right here, and the Nazi powers, aka Italy and Germany, both of them, will be shown in this red, which you can see we are just showing this, uh, this little island right here this little part right here as this entire area would be defended but we don't want to show that right now american naval ships aka the u.s s pearl harbor and her transport ships would continue to push downwards until they would soon be intercepted by the italian navy they wanted to push through this navy front and start a second push through here but it would be quite hard and so the first naval battles would start the battle will be between the USS Pearl Harbor and her transport, the USS Saratoga, versus the Italian Mussolini, the largest Italian battleship ever made. The Italian Mussolini would soon sink to the depths after the battle, with the Italian Mussolini falling. While the Saratoga was damaged and would have to be sent back to port, the Pearl Harbor would soon be able to take coastline and be able to help transport ships get a landing, making the United States have landing in Italian Africa. The Italians in Africa would have a harder time having to have a fight a war on two fronts, having to lower their defenses in this lower southern territory, making it so the Americans could easily push through a lot quicker to make it so they could not lose more ocean territory up here, with, the Ita with American troops even pushing over here. The Italians would continue to lose naval territory until they lost full naval supremacy to the large Pearl Harbor, the largest battleship ever made. This wall has just took a turn against the Italians. The Americans would do a spearhead. Well, they both would make a spearhead to cut off this large area of the Italian Libyan area. But this area would not surrender and have to be taken by force with American troops pushing in and squeezing it further and further until it is forced to capitulate as Italy continues to lose desert territory to the American cause. It was a bloodshed. A terrible, terrible bloodshed. Italian Libya would fall three months later. The Americans would soon fully take Sicily and would plan a landing to get on the boot and probably take over Corsica and the small Italian island over here. The American naval territory would continue to expand, pushing through and going over here to this Italian island and moving up towards Corsica, making a landing on both of these ex both of these islands. Corsica would fall in a matter of a month, and this other Italian island would fall in a matter of three weeks. Italy was starting to fall underneath itself. Germany, seeing what was going on, would soon declare war on its ally, because it wanted it, it wanted to protect the Italian people by, well, invading the, invading the Italians. Nazi forces would push through northern Italy quite quickly, putting Italy into two parts. Its other part would have a larger and hard fight with Roma with Ro country of Romania even joining in to get some land out of it. Germany and R Romania would plan to split the nation, split this little area between themselves, as it would help Romania to expand. The United States, seeing what was going on, would would make a landing on the boot and would start to push up. But it's both nations both went to hold Rome, which was the center of Italian nationalism. American, not American, Nazi troops would push through Vichy France to get some more through as the Alps were quite hard to invade and Switzerland was a neutral country in this great war. As after pushing through the Alps, the Panzers would easily push through the plains of Italy. Italy said what was about to happen to them as American troops would continue to push until the capture of Rome. And they would stay still until Nazi troops would soon encounter American troops days later and would start to fight them. Italy has now been split into two, and the Italian territories would start to, well, become Italian. As Mussolini would escape Rome and take a plane over to its African territories and would soon lose its territory over here to the Nazi cause. Nazi forces started to take over a lot of Italian areas, t taking a few uh, Italian areas 
from its American territories, which it had gained from Great Britain and France. New Nazi territories, so they are no longer puppets. The Romania, Romania and, uh, and Germany would soon have talks over this area right here. A peace agreement was came upon where Romania would get this massive piece of land, expanding Romania's empire from sea to sea, and Germany would get its northern Italian puppet, which would stay as Nazism, while the rest of Italy would soon kick out Mussolini and become a large African nation, and would make peace with Hitler, making this an independent African nation. It Italy is now officially out of the war. It is now the United States, it's gained territories versus Germany and Germany's territories. Germany's allies were not really involved in the war. And something surprising happens. Mr. Truman and the Nazi supremacist Adolf Hitler meet at, Lo meet at the Los Angeles conference, as it would be known as in this timeline, and would sign a peace treaty between each other. Here are the terms in hand. Nazi Germany gets to make the new world map with its territories, and the US gets to do the same with their territories. The war ends and Germany and the United States are no longer at war, and the United Kingdom gets its independence again. The map would soon change from looking like this, to looking like this. The newest country on the map is the newly formed United Fascist States of Europe, which is combined with the, United, the USSR, Finland, and Poland, as you can see right next to Germany. Germany also gave the territories in Greece to its friend Bulgaria and freed the United Kingdom, Australia, India, and Cyprus, but gave Ireland some territory in Northern Ireland and kept it as a puppet, while the United States gave its land back to Canada. With the war over, the two powers made small land wars with smaller countries, per se. Germany would soon declare war on Liechtenstein and Switzerland. Uh, they, got, they were switched up there. German troops wanted this for quite a while, and an easy push into Switzerland would soon begin, with Switzerland falling in the matter of a month. Germany would look a lot better on the map, and would be changing its name from Nazi Germany to something way better in my opinion. The creation of the German Confederation, a new force in the world, the world's largest superpower, controlling a lot of lands in Africa, the Americas, and Asia. Well, the United States would soon have another war to mess with. The United States would soon declare war on Egypt, as Egypt was having a fascist uprising during the time, and American troops would soon start to push into Egypt as wanting to defend them from Nazism, as what they thought of, of course. The push would be fierce and would be quite quick, as American technologies were a lot better than the Egyptian technologies. Taking Cario, the Suez Canal, and the pyramids, Egypt would fall quickly after only two months. With the wars being over and everyone thinking world peace has become a reality, a new thing would start. A new kind of war. A very, very cold war.